I'm leaving the borders today. I'm in East Lothian, and my first destination is that hill right there. I'm going to climb probably one of the two most prominent hills in East Lothian, which is known as Trapnain Law. From a distance in a car, the plane looks rather rounded and innocuous, but once you get up here, it's actually a really testing rock climb. Yeah, maybe this wall is just a, a bridge too far, as they say, especially with no ropes. There seem to be like a little cave in this bit though. If I can maybe get in here. Yeah, well, it's the word. Coming out of my comfort zone in the Scottish borders today and doing a little tour of East Lothian, our neighbours to the north. But there's one thing that links the Scottish borders and East Lothian more than any other, and it's this hill here, Traprain Law. Now if you're from the Scottish Borders, or if you watch my films about the Scottish Borders, you may be thinking, those ramparts on Traprain Law there look familiar. Well they should do. It's because Traprain Law was inhabited by the Votadine tribes, the same tribe as inhabited Eildon Hill North. These two centres were the Votadine's power bases in the south of Scotland. See why the ancient Votadini tribes valued this site so much. The only real high point in a flat land of arable farming country. And a place not only of residence, but a place where legends were born. The number of Roman artefacts found here on Traprain Law has been quite outstanding. It's really been one of the key drivers that's let us know that the Vodino tribes in the east of Scotland here were working in conjunction with the Romans. Another thing that Traprain is famous for is it's herd of wild ponies. Oh. Oh, whoa. large buzzard soaring about above my head here now, but I'm struggling to get him in focus.
seen or a fantastically surprising rocky mountain amidst all this flat arable land. And a real fantastic day out. But there are loads of other surprises in Canadian that are well, well off the tourist trail. And that's what I'm going to try and find today. I'm now down here at Aberlady Bay on the Firth of Forth, but I'm not your usual bird spotter. I'm looking for something a bit more interesting than that. Yeah, what I'm looking for today is a World War II wreck. But can you guess what it's a wreck of? A plane. A plane. No. Sorry? A boat. A boat, good guess. But no. A, what? a tank. A tank. Are you mad? No, what it is is something you don't normally stumble upon. Certainly not something I've ever stumbled upon. It's the wreck, or the wreck of two submarines. But the problem with these submarines is going to be finding them. Because they're so far out on the tidal plane here, they're only visible at extremely low tide. And apparently they're over a mile away. Maybe quite hard to tell through the, the camera angle, but the tide here recedes for miles, it's vast. I'm just hoping that I don't sink in quicksand or the tide comes in and drowns me. It's quite scary out here, it's just a vast nothingness. I think this is it though. This is what I've just walked halfway across the bloody ocean to find. <laughs> two World War II submarine wrecks. Oh. So here's the other one. I think the other one's in a better state of repair, yeah definitely. Let's go back and have a look at the other one. There you go, it's a long, treacherous walk over a vast area and you need to come at low tide exactly, otherwise you won't see these things. But these were midget class submarines used in World War II. You see the German ships used to hide in the Norwegian fjords and then sneak out and bomb the British ships. So the British developed this tiny little submarine which was towed across the North Sea by a bigger vessel then let loose. And it sneaked up the fjords and bombed these German ships. There's only six of her in, in action. These two were actually training ones. But five guys, five people manned this thing. Imagine how claustrophobic and cold and wet it was in there. Absolute horrors. But these guys done it. So there you go. You fancy a day out in East Lothian with something a bit different from the usual tourist fare. Why not come and see a couple of wrecked submarines? Right, let's make an arduous trek back over this sand plain. But, I'm only just beginning. I'm only just beginning. 
there are loads of things off the tourist trail in East Lothian that you have to come and see. So why not come with me and I'll show you them today. This is the wonderfully touristy town of North Berwick in East Lothian. But it's a town with very strong connections to one of the darkest episodes in Scottish history. And that is the witch trials of the 18th and 17th century. See the North Berwick witch trials were some of the first and most famous in all of Scottish history and involved King James VI himself as James and his cohorts travelled back from Norway across the North Sea a coven of witches in North Berwick supposedly whipped up a storm to try and kill James they were unsuccessful but they sent James on a journey of retribution and revenge on witches for the rest of his time in power. This is the very churchyard here, where over 200 witches are supposed to have danced. A merry dance to whip up a storm to kill King James VI. In North Berwick here though, it kind of feels like the witch hunts are breezed over, almost used as a kind of comical tourist information, just a, a, a tiny little snippet on the board there. Further up the road, there's a far more poignant, emotional, hard-hitting and truthful testimony to all the women who died under this terrible regime. So here I am in the delightful little village of Spot. And I can tell you that Spot is far more than a blemish on the landscape. Is that funny? I thought so. But Spot here was deeply embroiled in the witch hunts and witch trials of the 17th century. But the claim to fame, which Spot has, is that apparently this was the site of the last witch burned in Scotland. And a stone has been put there to mark the spot. This is it, the witch's stone. One of extremely few monuments to the huge number of people, primarily women, that were killed in the 17th century in the name of religion, persecuted for being witches, just because they were a bit, a bit different, maybe still hanging on to the pagan religion when Christianity was overtaking the whole country. Mary and Lily was burned here in 1698 because she was a witch. Terrible, terrible end for some innocent, innocent women probably. Do you find it quite sad that this kind of little forgotten, modest, unkempt monument is all there is in Scotland? to this terrible episode. 